So you've learned about ionic compounds, but have you thought about how they form and how they get their charge? I'm Leah Fish from LeahForSci.com and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how ions form and how they get their charge. Before we get into how ions get their charge, we have to discuss why ions want to get a charge. And this all goes back to the octet rule. The octet rule, as the word implies, is the rule of eight, and this says that every atom wants to have a complete outer shell of electrons or a complete octet. As with every rule, there are exceptions to the octet rule, but let's focus on just the standard atoms for now. Here's a trick for recognizing the valence electrons on the group A elements. When you start counting from the left, the first group all have one valence electron and the second group all have two. This trick does not apply to transition metals because the way their electrons are organized is a little bit different. Moving on to 3A, we have three valence electrons, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The reason I put the number over helium, when you're looking at electron grouping, helium actually fits right here next to hydrogen. It's on the right because it's a noble gas, but it only has two rather than eight valence electrons. Going back to the octet rule, the noble gases are happy. They have their full octet, but what about the rest of the atoms? Looking at something like sodium or chlorine, they don't naturally have a full octet, so they have to go out of their way to find that octet. We'll start with sodium and recognize that it has an atomic number of 11 and that it's located in the third period on the periodic table. If we draw the nucleus of sodium, we'll write Na and give it a plus 11 because the atomic number tells me how many protons I have in the nucleus. We'll draw a small circle to represent the nucleus and now start drawing in the electron shells. The first shell is going to have two electrons because the smallest shell can only hold two. The second shell can hold a total of eight electrons, and that means if we already have two and eight, that's 10. That means the 11th electron will be by itself in the outermost shell. Going back to the octet rule, if sodium has one valence or one outermost electron, how is it going to get eight? We can think, okay, sodium will steal an electron from another atom and then another one, and then another one. The problem, though, is the more electrons that an atom steals, the more energy it has to use up, and sodium or any atom does not have enough energy to take seven in electrons. So instead of taking electrons from another atom, sodium will simply give up its outermost electron. By giving away that electron, we lose not only the electron, but the entire shell that came with it. If we look at sodium now, after giving away that electron, the next outermost shell has a total of eight, and that means sodium has a full octet and it's happy. But now that it has a full octet, we have to account for what happened when that electron was given up. So let's do a quick balance of charge. If sodium has 11 protons, that means it has a charge of plus 11 in the nucleus, but now sodium only has 10 electrons, and that means we have a charge of minus 10 in the electron cloud. When we subtract 10 from 11, we get a net of plus 1, and that means sodium now has a charge of plus 1. If an atom has a charge by gaining or losing electrons, that's what we call an ion, and that means the sodium is a plus 1 ion. Looking back at the periodic table, let's see what happens when we analyze chlorine, which has an atomic number of 17 and is also located in the third period. We'll start with the nucleus, which has a charge of plus 17 due to its atomic number and then we'll fill in the electrons. When we're looking at a neutral atom, the atomic number equals the number of protons and also equals the number of electrons because it's neutral. The first shell has only two electrons and that's because the first is the smallest shell and can't hold more than two. The second shell is going to have a complete set of eight electrons. That gives me a total of 10. If we already have 10 electrons, and we need a total of 17, we simply add seven electrons to the outermost shell. Going back to the octet rule, if chlorine wants to have eight in its valence, but it only has seven, that means we're missing one. Unlike sodium, which was able to give up one electron, chlorine is not going to give up seven. That's way too many electrons to give away. So instead, chlorine will find an atom such as sodium that is willing to give up an electron and take the electron from that atom to complete its outer shell. When we add in that electron, the octet is now complete, but we no longer have an equal number of protons and electrons. So let's calculate. 
We have a charge of plus 17 in the nucleus, and that's because the atomic number is 17, which gives me 17 protons. We now have a charge of minus 18 in the electron cloud, and that's because we have the seven initial electrons and the one that we added. When we subtract 18 from 17, we get minus 1, which means that chlorine with a complete octet is an anion with a charge of minus 1, or simply Cl minus. If you understand what I've shown you, you can now apply this to every single atom within the group A elements. However, on an exam, you're not going to have time to actually go and calculate each one. So let me show you a trick that has to do with the valence electrons on the periodic table. If an atom has one valence electron, like the sodium atom we looked at, that means it has one electron that it can give away to revert to the shell that's underneath for a complete octet. And that means group 1 is going to form plus 1 ions. If we look at group 2, they have two electrons to give away. And that means they're going to form plus 2 ions. Jumping over to group 3, they can form plus 3 ions. And that's where we'll stop. An atom like carbon, which has four valence electrons, is going to be torn between do I give up electrons or do I steal electrons? So carbon is likely not going to form an ion. Instead, it'll form a covalent bond, which is a topic for another time. Now let's move over to the right. We said that noble gases are full, so we're not going to apply a trick because they don't form any ions. Noble gases are going to form a charge of zero. They don't form charges. But the halogens, which is group 7, these all have 7 valence electrons, and just like chlorine, will want to steal one more and form a charge of negative 1. Moving to group 6 on the left, these are missing 2 electrons, and so will tend to form a negative 2 ion, and group 5 will tend to form a negative 3 ion. You likely will not see charges of 4 or more, so ignore that. Remember, you count from the left plus 1, plus 2, and plus 3, and you count from the right, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we looked at sodium, which forms a plus 1 ion, and we looked at chlorine, which forms a minus 1 ion. But what do we do now that we have these charged atoms? Think of the rule of opposites. Opposites attract, and here if we have a plus and minus, they're going to come together and give me an ionic compound NaCl or sodium chloride, which is common table salt. Now be sure to join me in the next video where we'll look at ionic bonding and specifically how to find the number of atoms that come together to neutralize that charge and to form that ionic compound. So what do you think? Do you feel confident enough to conquer these chemistry topics on your own? Thing is, this short video was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to understand in chemistry which cannot be taught in just 5 to 10 minutes. But luckily, I have prepared an exclusive video training that I am offering as a free gift to you. Trust me, if you're serious about chemistry, you can't miss this one. To claim your free gift, visit layofersci.com slash chemistry gift. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive email updates, including information regarding new videos, study tips, resources, and more. The URL again, layofersci.com slash chemistry gift, all one word. A quick favor, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you know anyone else struggling with this information, share it with them too. They'll thank you for it. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you like most about this video and, of course, if you have any questions. You can also say hi on Facebook by visiting me at facebook.com slash still here. Don't forget to subscribe.